All right. So thank you and welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to hold people accountable so we can achieve our results, meet deadlines, uh, accomplish the priorities and performance standards that we want to achieve. So that's why we're here. And I don't know about you, but I'm like everybody. I've had uh, I've had my share of uh, holding people accountable problems. When I was building my business, uh, Headley Construction, uh, Headley D Construction and Management, I had the same problem I think almost everybody does. It's really hard holding people accountable. And I, I wasn't very good at it, and I avoided it, actually. I, I never wanted to fire anybody. I had one of my guys fire everybody. I wouldn't, didn't want to hold people accountable. I had somebody else do it. It's just my personality. And I think most business owners have the same personality. We don't like to really hold people accountable. There are a few percentage of people in the United States or the world that actually uh, are good managers. And it's less than 10 to 20%. Now, when I say managers, managing people, not managing projects, not managing estimates, but managing people is one of the hardest things there is to do. So as I built my company, I failed. I went through a lot of people. I had a lot of people come and go. And uh, oh, eventually I figured it out. And I figured it out. The problem was not them. It was me. And I had to change how I manage my business, my people, my organization in order to achieve goals. So that's what we're here to talk about today is how do I achieve the goals through people? And I can't do it myself. I, I, I was on the phone yesterday, a Zoom call, a coaching call with a client. And uh, they, I, I coached him uh, three years ago. They called for some additional help three years later, which was yesterday. If they're at the same size, the same place, the same problems. Why? Because they won't delegate. They won't let go. They won't won't hold people accountable. And they're unwilling to hire, uh, train, delegate, let go. And then they can't grow. So what's your problem? Why are you here? You're obviously here for a reason. Accountability is a very, very important topic in the construction world. And uh, that's, that's why we're here. So today, my name is George Hadley. I mentioned that earlier. I coach contractors. That's my business. I also own some real estate and, uh, you know, collect some rent. But I started my company in 1972, graduated in 72, and started Headley Construction in 70, 77, and built it up. And at one point, I had uh, 150 employees and, and 12 superintendents, six project managers, and a con concrete department. And uh, we did great. But I had the same struggle. I struggled with holding people accountable. And I, I went to this uh, seminar, and I listened to this lady present on how to do it. And I realized that I needed her. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I called her to help me one-on-one. And she she basically encouraged me to be nicer, to be listening more, to be more friendly, to be less demanding. So I tried that, but it didn't work. I didn't have the style to make it work. Well, the problem is I didn't have the basics laid out properly. I didn't have good systems I couldn't have, didn't have good standards. I postponed meetings. I better dealed the dates and the deadlines. You know, if I wasn't available, I'd just say, well, we'll meet some other time. I keep pushing off reality. And because of that, my people started doing the same thing. And I realized if I'm not accountable, how the heck do I expect my people to be accountable? If I don't follow the systems, why should they? If I miss my meetings, why should they attend? If I miss my deadlines, why should they meet their deadline. So I realized it wasn't them, it was me. So that's what we're here to talk about. So today, my main business is helping other contractors achieve their goals. And I wrote a book, uh, you can get it on Amazon if you're interested. It's in the worksheet. But anyway, how do we move your effectiveness or your leadership or your management to the next level? That's why we're here today. So hopefully you all downloaded and printed the PDF handout. Hopefully you've got yourself a copy. We're going to just follow along and go through the notes. Uh, I I'm not going to cover everything, but just basically give you an overview and a, a workbook as sort of a checklist of what we're going to talk about today. All right. So, uh, so, 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 do you have trouble holding people accountable? That's the real starting question. And most people do. Most people have a real tr trouble to get them to perform, to be responsible, to meet their deadlines, to hit the production goals. I mean, look at this picture. This is so typical. What do we got? I don't know, 10 people when nobody working. How are we going to hit the goals if nobody's working? Who's in charge here? Who's managing this crew? You know, this is typical. You, you see it every day. You just go out on a job site and there's more people standing around than working. Why is that? Why don't people want to achieve the labor crew production goals? It's just perplexing to me 
Nobody's in charge. Nobody's pushing. Nobody cares. So why is this happening? Why don't you hold your people accountable? You're obviously here because you're struggling with this topic, or maybe you're not, maybe you're pro, and you want some of your people to uh, learn some ideas. But why, why don't you hold people accountable? What are you afraid of? You afraid of confrontation? You afraid of uh, upsetting people? Are you afraid of hitting your goals? No, I don't think so. You don't have enough time. What is it? You do too much yourself. You don't delegate. You don't let go. What is it? I, I've got it down to for me in my my experience. It's basically I was avoiding the pain of confrontation. When I hold people accountable, there's a potential they're going to get upset at me. And so some, one of the guys actually is on the call today said, how, how do I hold them accountable? What do I do, threaten them? No, that's not how you get people to want to do what you want them to do. People don't do anything unless they want to do it. You've got to encourage, motivate, inspire to make people want to do it. You don't do that by screaming and yelling and threatening them. If you don't work harder, I'm going to fire you. Well, yeah, sure, then you got no help. Right. So the number one reason, the number one reason why is what? What do you think it is? And I've already said it four times. The problem is you. The manager is the problem. They don't do what they need to do to get people to want to be accountable. So most business owners or entrepreneurs are very impatient. They don't like to have meetings. They don't really want to deal with people problems. They don't really get into the details too much. They they don't really like to let go and mic in in um let go. They like to control and micromanage. They they like to be in charge and they like to solve all the problems because they're the smartest people in the world. And they never want to follow the company. Says that's for the people. I don't want to follow the system. I don't have to do it. I'm the owner. I'm the boss. And uh, they hate regular scheduled meeting. Every Tuesday at nine we got to have a meeting except for me because I got better deals I got to go take care of. I got a call. I got a problem. I got an issue. I got to put that first in front of all my people. So I'm not accountable even to myself. And so they avoid conflict. They avoid confrontation. And they avoid people holding them accountable. So what's your reason why you're here today? What are you trying to figure out? So what happens is, just quick overview uh, the dilemma is, and, and you may have seen this before, I've shown this before, first of all, we get too busy. When we do too much ourselves, we don't delegate, we don't let go, we're too busy. When we're not busy, we can't focus on the majors, we focus on the minors. And I always say, most contractors who have employees, workers, field workers, you're in the labor business. Nothing matters except getting your labor to finish on time, but we don't have time to deal with the labor. We just worry about other stuff like, you know, getting paid and and uh, bidding jobs. And, you know, it's all about the people. And I got to get them to perform. So that's the question. How do I get people to perform? Um, so just a minute here. Somebody raise their hand. I will stop in a minute and take some questions. Or if you have a chat, hit me a button on the chat and I'll do that. Um so uh, just hit the chat on the Q&A if you've got a question. I'll cover it in a second. All right. So we get too busy. And when we get too busy, we don't focus. And then we don't have a plan. We can't implement our plan. We don't focus on what we should be focused on. Then we react all day. We put out fires. We become firefighters. We don't delegate. We don't sit down. We don't train. We don't coach. We don't hold people accountable. We don't have time. We just wander down the hall. We say, hey, Joe, how's the job going? Oh, pretty good. You on schedule? Yeah, pretty much, which means you're not. Pretty much is no. But so we don't want to deal with it. We know there are probably problems, but we just keep walking on by in the office. And so because of that, we end up having to fight a lot of fires because we're too slow. We got issues. We didn't get change order signed for whatever reason. I'm, I'm working too hard, doing too much myself. So I don't have time to sit down, coach, mentor, train, encourage my people, hold them accountable. And therefore, I become very inefficient. Uh, we leak money, we make problems, we do stuff we shouldn't do, we do work without a signed change order, we don't get paid for things we should, uh, labor comes in over budget because the crew wants to have overtime and we don't have it in the budget, and nobody nobody wants to deal with that, so we just let it happen, and pretty soon we're over budget 10% on labor, which is a huge number at the end of the year. 
And so what happens, we slowly start losing money down the drain. And when people hire me to come into their company, you know, why do they call me? Because they got issues. They're not making enough money or whatever it is. And so we, the first thing I look at is where are you losing money down the drain? And is it your labor over budget? Is it your estimate not right, correct? Where are you losing the money? You missed items? So I, I've got to determine where you're losing money. Why are you losing money? It's not because you're a bad company. It Something's not happening. Nobody's holding people accountable to create accurate estimates, to hold the labor production hours on budget every week. Nobody's holding project manager accountable to do a monthly job cost report. Nobody's taking time to meet with their direct reports on a weekly basis, one-on-one, -on -one, to go through the list to make sure they're performing and, and accomplishing the tasks required to, to finish jobs on budget and on time. What, what are we doing here? We're, we're just losing money. We continue to let it happen because I'm so busy. And so what do I need? Do I need good people? Well, I can't find any good help. Well, that's because you're not a good manager. Managers manage. They don't do the work. They manage. Project managers are doers. They do work. Manager of the project manager is the one who has to hold people accountable. So if your org chart does not have a vice president of construction, let's say, who's managing the project managers? Well, that's the owner or the president. The president has to take time in their week to sit down with all of their direct reports and manage them. Well, if there's nobody managing your people, nobody's keeping them accountable and no one's holding to make the budget. So what do we got to do? So the results are we continually to lose the money down the drain. So we've got to manage, which includes holding people accountable. So I have to change my normal natural personality from a good guy, visionary, uh, make everybody happy, entrepreneur, encouraging, inspirational leader into a manager as well, which I don't have that talent. So I have to learn how to become a manager. It starts with clear understanding of what's expected and a weekly one-on-one -on -one meeting with my direct reports. If you're not having regular meetings, how do you know they're on, on time, on budget? If you're not digging into the details, how do you know if they got all their shop drawings approved or not? How do you know if they got all the changers approved if you've never gone out to the job site, Mr. Manager or Ms. Manager, right? So think about yourself, put yourself in this position and ask yourself, are you too busy to get it all done? Are you wearing too many hats? Uh, maybe you're doing too much yourself. What should you be delegating? Uh, are you the only one who seems to be accountable? You know, why is that? Because you're not letting them be accountable. You're, you're, taking, back, you're taking back their responsibility and making all decisions for them. Uh, do they continue to call you all day with stupid decisions? Why is that? It's because they're afraid of you that you're going to overrule the decision and scream at yelling them. People call you because they're not confident and they haven't been empowered with the authority to make decisions. So how do I hold people accountable if they can't make a decision? Uh, in, in, do you have to make every decision? It feels like it. Well, that's because you want to make decisions. Why do you want to make every decision? Because you don't trust people. Why don't you trust people? Well, you don't have systems, training, and meetings with them on a regular basis to help them become the best they can be. Uh, you can't get your people to meet your goals and perform. Here's another crew. Here's a typical crew. You got a backhoe guy and everybody watching them. What do you got? One, two, three, four, five. seven guys. One, two, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven people watching one backhoe operator. Is that ridiculous or what? And so think about how do we get this organized? We need a plan. We need a layout plan and a dig team and a stall team. And we don't have them all standing around. That's not in your budget. So do you need to hire? Do you need to delegate? The only way you can grow is if you let go, and the only way you can let go is if you hire and delegate and then hold them accountable. Well, no, that, become, that means you need to become a manager of your people, not just a teller of what to do. And, uh, and I can't find any help. Well, you've got good people. You just don't let them be good because you're micromanaging and controlling them. Now, if I'm offending, I, I don't mean to be personal, but, but I've just seen this so many times. I've got 50 full-time clients. I've got another 30 or 40 and another 100 I've helped over the last several years. I see the same things over and over and over again. My people aren't accountable because I don't hold them accountable. Uh, and, and so if you can't hold people accountable, what's next? What do we got to do? I got to learn the steps. 
And so do, do you have clear written job descriptions? Everybody clearly knows what their job descriptions are, what their must-dos are with deadlines and milestones, and do you enforce them to achieve those descriptions, activities, responsibilities, and accountabilities? Do you enforce your standards and your systems? Or do you allow people to, yeah, we got systems, we don't use them. I hear that all the time. I, when I do I, uh, come into a company, to, they hire me to come in for a few days and help them with their overall programs. Uh, I do a survey of their of all their employees, or at least half of them, depending on the size of the company. And one of the questions I ask, do you have company standards and systems? And they'll go, yeah. Are they enforced? No. It's almost 80% of the time. No. When's the last time you tr were trained on the systems? Uh, maybe never. They don't even remember. So what do you expect? How do you hold them accountable something they don't even know they're supposed to do? So uh, do you meet weekly with your direct reports? No. <laughs> Walk down the hall. How you doing? Hey, you on time? Yeah, pretty much, which means you're not. That uh, pretty much means no, sorry. Uh, it's yes or no. There's no in between. It's either yes or no. So what is it? And uh, do you tolerate poor performers? That's the thing that makes me crazy. I've got really strong leaders who tolerate poor performers. Got good old Joe, who just always is a creep. He's always mean and nasty. He doesn't do what he's supposed to do. But you keep him around because he's a good pipe player, for example, or a good framer. You know, you tolerate poor performers. You just look at the professional uh, NBA, which is going on right now, the finals. And what do you see? You see the losing teams are teams that aren't teams. The teams that didn't get in the playoffs, are, they got a couple of losers on there that the, they have to keep, or they kept, or they didn't bench. Why? They didn't want to get get uh, beat up in the press that they didn't let somebody play. And, you know, they're avoiding pain, right? And so are you accountable to hold your people accountable? That's the question. So I want to ask you when you're, you know, here's another one. we got one guy in the ditch and seven guys watching him. And what's up with that? That's probably the boss in the ditch and everybody's watching them, it, remember, the more you do yourself, the less your people do. That's the key right there. And the less money you'll make, of course, because you got six guys watching one, the boss working, who's not even in the budget. The boss is not in the budget. The foreman and the crew's in the budget, but not the project manager or the general superintendent, right? So uh, do you feel like sometimes you're responsible for everything? There you are. And, and if you feel like that, uh, that's because you're a problem solver. You walk around with a sign around your neck that says, I solve other people's problems. And when I solve other people's problems, they continue to bring, bring me more problems. When I solve the problem, I own the problem. When they come to me for decisions, I own the problem and the solution because I tell them what to do. And if it doesn't work, the person's not accountable to achieve what has to happen because I told them what to do. And if it didn't work, it's my problem. So I can't keep solving everybody's problems. And so if I've got a sign that says I solve problems, people bring you more problems. And they bring you problems because you don't have meetings, you don't have training, you don't have coaching, you don't have mentoring. You don't have time, you're too busy. And so, so when I get this uh, uh, question asked me, uh, you know, the, the real thing is when I solve other people's problems, they bring me more problems. I already said that once. People responsible for nothing are responsible for nothing. So the key is, do you continually solve other people's problems? And if you do, you got to stop. So I passed these out of my peer group a few months, few, a year ago or so, these little signs that says, stop solving other people's problems. So I want that to be facing the person on their desk. And on the other side, it says, what's your solution? So when somebody brings you a problem, you've got to say, it's not my problem. It's your job to solve the problem. What's your solution? What's your suggested solution? Don't just blurt out. You know exactly what they need to do based on your company and your experience and you're the boss and you know the money and all that. But what do you think we ought to do? Reverse all your questions. Make people accountable for the solution and the performance. You can't keep solving their problems if you want to hold people ac accountable. So the more you do for them, the less they do for you. So high control, low performance. Low control, high performance. That's the key here. What do I have to do? And, and, and when they say, 
how you doing? Well, I, I, okay, so I, here's what I need you to do. I think you can get this done. They go, well, I'll, I'll try pretty much. Hopefully, no, no. You're either going to do it or you're not. It's yes or no. There's no trying. There's no hopefully. I learned this at our peer group meeting. One of the guys said, we, just, we don't use the word hopefully or I'll try anymore. It's unacceptable. It's either yes or no. You're going to finish on time. You're on time. You're over budget or not. Yeah. Well, pretty much. No. You got all the change orders signed? Yeah, pretty much. I got a meeting. No, that's a no. That's a no. There's no no's. It's there's it's either yes or no. Let's be real. I go out on a job site and ask the superintendent, how are we doing on the schedule? You got three weeks left and they got to open. Are you going to make it? Yeah, pretty much, I think. That means no. Let's get over it. I got to hold them. Again. Well, what's it going to take to get it to be a yes? Okay, let's, let's do a plan to get to a yes, right? That's my job. Hold them accountable. Not let them off the hook with all these simple little squishy answers is what they tend to want to do. And so uh, these are unacceptable. So here's a picture of me 20 years ago, I think. I'm not sure. That's my old office. And you know, look at all the stuff. I'm, I'm in charge of everything. I'm doing everything. And when I do too much myself, what happens? You know what happens. Not a lot. Everybody's waiting for me. I got a line outside my door. They're w waiting for me to answer all their questions. And so what doesn't happen? I'm too busy to manage people. I'm too busy to have a meeting with my direct reports on a regular basis. I'm doing their work for them. And I don't have any time to hold people accountable. I don't want to deal with that. And so what happens is I tolerate poor performers, poor performance. I allow it to happen. So why can't I tolerate? Why can't I delegate? Why can't I trust? Well, I think I know it better. I think I can do it faster myself. Maybe the problem's me. And uh, so what I have to do is learn how to let go to grow. Let go to grow. Uh, may, hold them accountable. Explain the situation, what's required. If they need some training how to do it, that's fine. Make sure they clearly understand it and hold them accountable. Yes or no, you will achieve the goal by Friday or Tuesday or whatever. So I finally, back before the internet, back when I was a young project manager, business owner at maybe 35 years old. I've, that was before we had the internet and we could email all this stuff. Now, in the old days, they'd bring me stuff, put it on my desk. And uh, I finally had a stamp made. Please handle this and tell, don't tell me what you did. I don't want to know. Just get it done. You know, quit. So I had a stamp made. But now you just email back. Uh, duh, figure it out, right? That's what you email back. Figure it out or I don't need you. You know, I had a superintendent kept asking me to call it. I can't get the plumber to show up. Okay, do you want me to call him for you? If so, I don't need you anymore. Do you want your job or not? Your job is to make sure the plumber shows up on time and we finish on time and on budget. Okay, you got it? I don't care what you have to do. I don't care if you have to drive to his office, drive to his house, whatever it takes. Your job is to get the plumber there. It's not, I mean, I'm not going to call. If I'm calling for you, I'm doing your job and I... And I'm going to have to take a pay cut, and you're going to have to pick a take. A, you're going to have to go down to a laborer. It's not going to happen, right? So I got to stop being the play caller and the quarterback and the player. I got to transfer and delegate, right? So what happens is we end up with all these monkeys on our on our back. Everybody keeps bringing you monkeys, and uh, you know, I go out on a job site, I find an old piece of paper, and I start taking notes. Uh, this guy needs this, they, George. Can you do this? Can you? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll do this. I'll do that. Can you help me with this? So I end up with a whole post-it note list of stuff that I'm supposed to do for my people. Those are monkeys that jumped onto my back. And so how do I get the monkey off my back? And I realize the more I do for my people, the less I do. And the harder I work, the further behind I get to accomplish my ultimate goal of building a great company and making high margin profits. So I got to get that sign off my desk. I got to stop solving other people's problems. So I'm sitting in my office one day. It's it's and I got a ton of stuff on my desk, and I put it all in my monkey case, my briefcase. I take it home, and it's Friday, and I can't get it all done. So I come in on Saturday and I work all day, and I on Monday I find out all my all my project managers and my superintendents were out goofing off. They went boating, fishing, hunting, golfing, whatever they do. Well, I'm working for them while they're goofing off. How does this, they work for me. No, I work for them. And so I've got to stop solving their problems. And uh, I'm stuck. And I've got to 
get that monkey off my back. And the more monkeys you take, the more they give to you, the more you get. And so monkeys only jump up. People, people below you want to put the monkey on your back. They want to take their problem and put it on your back so then you're accountable, you're responsible, and they don't have to get things done because it's your they're wait now they're waiting for you for a decision. I can't get the plumber to show up. Can you call him for me? Yeah, okay. So I try and I try and I don't get him and finally I get him. So what's what's my superintendent doing? He's waiting for me to solve his problem. So the job's now it's my problem. We're two days late, right? And so what I have to do is stop solving the problems and get the monkey, monkey off my off my back. So the key is delegation. Delegation is achieving results through people. And so I've got to get that monkey off my back. That's the key here. So on page two of the worksheet, steps to delegate. Steps to delegate. Page two, we, we haven't gotten very far, but that's okay. Got a lot of examples in here. Most of it's uh, examples, but let's get to the steps. To delegate, first of all, I, really, I have to make a decision that I got to stop some other people's problems. In order to hold them accountable, I can't accept responsibility for their problem. So I have to delegate, let go, and hold them accountable. So step one is I have to determine what do I want to delegate. So I look at my workload, things I should do, things I must do, and things I don't want to do or don't really need to do. So what am I doing I shouldn't need to do? And I take the activities. Um, oh, I spelled tasks wrong. It looks like take the activities that I shouldn't really have to do. I shouldn't really have to schedule the crews. My field manager should do that. I shouldn't really have to approve all change orders let, under a certain amount of money. My project manager should be smart enough to do that. I shouldn't have to make sure this, that, and the other thing. Uh, there are certain things I need to do. If I'm helping the estimator, uh, I need to still check the bid, check the hours, check the, check the accuracy and the inclusions, exclusions in the bid. I still need to review the contracts to make sure we're not, you know, in an issue contractually. Certain things I need to do, but certain things I don't need to do. So what do you don't need to do? I so I, I see owners still doing the doing the bookkeeping, still writing checks, still it makes me nuts. I see stuff what they're doing. Why don't you just hire an assistant and have them do it for you? It's 20 or 30, 40 bucks an hour. Who cares? It makes your life great and you can Stop doing it, right? So if you have a direct report, what can I delegate? If I'm a project manager, I can delegate coordinating shop drawings, uh, setting up the job in the in the computer software, the project management software. I can have them approve all the invoices. I can have them get them over to accounting. I can have them approve all the time cards. What do I need to delegate? And so targets, goals, uh, et cetera. So number two, I got to have a clear understanding. There has to be a two-way clear understanding of what's expected. What do I expect you to do when I delegate? And what's the overall goal? The overall goal is for you to take on more responsibility as assistant project manager to help me achieve as project manager, the project goal of on time, on budget, safe, no accidents, customer happy, et cetera, right? So in order to achieve the, one of the goals, we have to have a weekly schedule update by the superintendent. If I had an assistant, I don't have to call the superintendent. I can have my assistant call. Now, when I go out there every week as a senior project manager, I can review it with them. But I want to see it. I want to make sure it's coming in. So what's the clear understanding of what's expected? I expect look-ahead schedules every Friday downloaded into the project management software by the field foreman or superintendent. No exceptions. On Monday, I want my project assistant to go through and make sure everybody did what they're supposed to do. And if not, she lets me know and we we get them on the phone and we harass them until they do it. Or I go talk to the project manager, right? So what the heck's going on here? So targets, goals, results, responsibilities, deadlines, milestones. Milestones are important, not just deadlines, milestones. If I got a bid due in three weeks, I got, what's the first week, second week? When do I want to meet them? And what do I want to go over every few days until the final day of the bid? We got to set our boundaries. How much money are you allowed to spend without checking with me first? What resources do you have? Can you grab more people? Can you work overtime? Um, and, but I empower you to make decisions within these within this grid. And then we document it. Here's what we have to do. Here's what you're accountable and responsible to do. 
And then I got to empower them to do it. And I can't t- keep taking the job back. I can say, what's your solution? What's your accomplishment? How are you doing on that? And then I have to figure out who should be the right person to do what. So we take we take our list of activities required, and we break it down into parts. For example, a project manager is accountable for uh, this, uh, the, uh, I don't know, bring it on a budget, okay? And we have a crew of workers, uh, field workers. So I need someone to, to give me a weekly hourly report. So I'm accountable to bring the job on a budget. I need a weekly hourly report. First of all, I got to set up the budget in the in the project management system. So I can assign that to someone to do it. My job is to make sure they do it. Then I want a weekly report of how many hours per cost code. Well, I assign that to my assistant or my accounting uh, uh, job cost tracker, and they give me that every week. And then I sit down and go over it with the project manager or the foreman to make sure we stay on budget. So, so I find uh, who's the right person. I'm still accountable as the manager, project manager, but I'm assigning responsibilities to some of my people, and my job is to hold them accountable now, right? So I want to get the right person in the right box doing the right thing based on their skill level and, and experience and talent. And number four, then I want to make sure they clearly understand, whoever I'm delegating to, clearly understand what's 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 going on here. Who's accountable? They are accountable to get this done, not me. They are. And are they committed? Are they going to do what it requires to get it done? And they clearly understand how to do it, when it's due, how to accomplish the task. Okay, we're clear on that. Number five. We got to then my job as their manager, I call it the managing manager. I'm managing somebody who's doing something. I'm managing my direct report. My job is a monitor, stay informed, track their progress, see how they're doing, check their performance, and check their results on a regular basis. That's not at the end of the job. That's like weekly, daily, whatever it takes, depending on the complexity of it. You know, if I got a bid due in two weeks, my job is the is the estimating manager, not the estimator, but the person who manages the estimator, is to check in with them on a regular basis to make sure they're on track to meet the goal of an accurate estimate on two weeks from Thursday. All right? So that's my job. I can't just assume they're going to do it. I have to take responsibility to hold them accountable. And number six, uh, my job, as I just explained, is to hold them accountable. Now, when I meet with them midway on a, uh, let's say a bid, and I meet them in the second week, how are you doing? And they go, man, I got a problem. Okay, I'm here to support you and help you. But if I don't wait till the end of the, the bid date, we're screwed. We can't, you know, it's too late to find three more plumbing bids or or do a, do a takeoff on framing, for example, which is very complex. So what do I have to do? I have to hold them accountable and support them, right? And so I provide feedback, information, uh, make sure we have a regular check-in time, and my job is to train, encourage, motivate, and inspire, right, as a leader. Okay, and let me see. I got one question here. What does enforcement, anonymous attendee, enforcement is not screaming and yelling at them. We'll cover that in a minute. The enforcement is just continue to meet with them and clearly make sure they clearly understand the deadlines and accountabilities and your job is also to monitor to their workload. If they're overloaded, it's your problem, not theirs. Uh, and if you, like, no, number five, if you just stay in touch with them, your job is to stay in touch with them. You can't just assume they're going to do it, and three weeks later you go meet with them. It's too late. Because the boss has to stay in direct uh, with their direct reports. you got to stay in touch. got to know where they are. And you got to sit down with them and say, what's it going to take? It looks like you're falling behind. My my crew has a thousand hours and we're half done and they've spent you know six or seven hundred hours. It's too late. I should have watched them from day one every week. I need to know where they are. I can't scream and yell at them if I don't help them figure it out. First of all, they might not even have got a report. They might not know where they are. My job is to keep them informed, and I can't. You know, the the question was exactly enforcement. You don't need to enforce. You just stay in touch and encourage them and help them. You know, now if somebody's a flake, you get rid of them. But if they have a positive attitude and they meet your core values, you work with them and encourage them and motivate them. You don't, you don't just scream and yell. If you don't do this, you're out of here. No. How, who wants to work for a, a jerk boss? Nobody, right? So 
you know, I, I got that the other day from one of my clients. It's like, well, what kind of, what kind of, a what kind of conformance or what kind of enforcement tools can I use? Be a manager. I get tired of that. Well, if I'll threat, I'll threaten you with pay cut. I'll fire you. Okay. Fire them. Then what? Now you got nobody. So uh, there are certain people that need to get fired. It's most usually about values, not performance. Performance is because the manager didn't check in with them. Okay, let's keep going here. Thanks for, the, thanks for that. So we've got a decision tree ladder, delegation ladder, just a quickie on this. So you have to determine what level you want to be involved with. So first of all, there's the basic level, basic decision. It's routine. Hey, I, I need a new hammer. Well, just stink and go get one. You know, just do it. Nike, right? So no, don't don't waste my time. Where do I find a hammer? You know, I used to get phone calls from sitting in my office at six or seven a.m. in the morning. I get phone calls. Hey, this is a drywall delivery truck. Uh, where do I supposed to take this stuff? First of all, I don't know and I don't care. Uh, oh no no no! Well, I can't say that. Okay, I got to be someone nice. I go. Well, what does it say on your ticket? Where do you think you ought to be going? Who's your customer? We don't buy drywall. The drywall. Oh, it's Acme Drywall. Why don't you call them? Because, well, I can't find it. Well, then wait for them. And when they finally answer the phone, it's not my problem. Your truck's going to sit in a parking lot for two hours. I don't care. You have a contract with Acme Drywall. And just, you know, or you. I'll give you another uh, choice. See the drugstore across the street? Go there and buy a map. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. But anyway, I'm a little nasty on this. It's one of my pet peeves is, People asking me really stupid questions. You know, they call you up and go, wait, wait, hey, we ran out of uh, masking tape or whatever tape. What do you think I ought to do? Duh. That's my answer. Figure it out. And don't waste time. Get her done, right? Don't waste my time and your time asking me stupid questions. So you are 100% accountable in your job description to get things done, including Order in advance, three week, three week look ahead schedule. Uh, every day, I want to know what you need over the next three days. I want it on the job three days before we need it. You know, I want you to get things done. So I got to have a clear understanding of what's expected for my foreman or superintendent, for example. And uh, and I don't even know. I don't know what you did. Just do it. You know. Um, okay. So that's simple. We pretty much understand that, right? Uh, where do I get gas? Oh, give me a break. Drive around. Google it. I don't know. Minor decision. So that that's something that really doesn't need input, but they feel that they have to ask you. Uh, just get her done. You know, this is something within your scope of work. You are, as a foreman or a superintendent, you are 100% accountable, authorized, and power to handle minor decisions, problems, questions. What do you think I ought to do? The plumber put a bunch of dirt in, in front of our footing. I don't know. Get figured out. I'm not driving out there to tell you how to move, you know, a bucket full of dirt. Just get her done. You know, uh, get some guys out there and move it or tell the plumber to get it out of the way or go talk to the superintendent or whatever. You know, I, I can't solve that problem. I'm not there. So, uh, you know, don't even call me on that. Just make good decisions and make discuss it. Uh, uh, think about it and just take action. And I don't even want to know about it. And if, when we meet once a week at our foreman meeting, you can tell me what you did. And I say, hey, that's a good decision. Uh, or, hey, you know, you had to think about this. Here's an alternative for next time. Because it's a $10 right decision. Number three is a uh, more complex decision. Uh, this is a little bit of a uh, brain needed. Uh, you know, what should we do about this? Or the guy wants me to do this and we're not really ready. Should What should I do? A change order? Should I ask for an extension or delay? Or what should I do here? You know, you're still authorized to make decisions as a superintendent or a foreman. You know, the, the, the wholesale house delivered the, long, the wrong size pipe. Well, what should I do? I call them up, tell them to deliver the right, get that. And, you know, do they even need to tell you? What do you think you ought to do? Uh, I think they ought to come and get it and bring me the name. Okay, why don't you make that happen? So on a minor decision or a complex decision, uh, it's a little more difficult. And uh, tell me what you think you ought to do. I go, okay, that sounds good. Make it happen. Or, you know, have you considered this? I'm not telling them what to do. I'm saying, what do you think 
what about this idea with this? Oh yeah. Okay. So if you want to do that, go ahead and get her done. And then just let me know how it came out. Okay. So I want to know how it worked out because it might involve a little money or a little delay or a little problem out in the field. Right. And number four are big decisions. These are things that cost money, contractual decisions. Uh, they want you to do stuff for free. It's, we don't allow that. What do you want to happen? So it's a strategic decision that me, needs some approval. It's over their spending limit. It's contractual. It's conflicting with the customer. It's a potential negative uh, outcome on our budget or, or on our contract. So I want us to meet on it over the phone or however we do it. And then we, we both agree on how we're going to do it. And then you, you, you get her done. You get her done. And then let me know how it worked out. All right. So there's four levels, but the point is level one and two, just move on. Just quit those calls. Once we implement this strategy, your phone calls will reduce from maybe 10 an hour to 10 a day or even three a day. If you meet with your uh, on the phone with your as a foreman with your project supervisor once a, once a day, that's that's pretty much all you need to do. In uh, none of these ongoing calls. Okay, let's turn to page three, and uh, let's talk about accountability for a few minutes. That's why we're here. So page three and four uh, are tied together. So let's start with page three: how to hold people accountable. And number one, the most important thing. If you're not accountable, your people won't be accountable. If you skip meetings, if you schedule a meeting and don't show up, if you require a weekly crew meeting like the photo and you don't do it, you don't enforce it, it's a waste of time. You're not accountable. You are the reason. And I've met with some of the people on the line here. And the reason your people aren't accountable because you're not accountable. You know, we have a phone call or a Zoom call, a coaching session, and you're always late, or you always call me the one hour before and tell me, oh, yeah, something better come along. Well, you're screwing me over. You can't, you're not accountable. How do you expect your people to be accountable? So you've got to plan your day and you got to have regular meetings with your direct reports and your team. And you must hold yourself accountable to be accountable. You set the example, people follow your leadership. How you input equals their output. And so you're accountable for your people's accountable. Number, number two, you are accountable for your people. You are 100% accountable for their performance. It's not them, it's you. You have to monitor and maintain communication with them on a regular basis to make sure they stay on performance standards, deadlines, milestones and achieve the results. So the boss has to hold people accountable by staying on them, meeting with them, hold them, hold them accountable, reviewing their performance on a regular basis. You can't do it once a month. That's it's too late. It's too late. Um, you know, I was talking to a guy yesterday on the phone and he, and he was a field manager. I said, he's got a big drywall crew. And he says, well, how often do you go out to the job? I have once a week. Well, how do you know the guys are on budget once a week? I mean, to me, Someone needs to watch the crew every couple of days. Most general superintendents visit the sites every one or two days. You can't do that every once a week. And sometimes you miss because it's too late. It's too late to fix the problem or see or pro provide solutions. So you are accountable for your people. You know, you hear these coaches after the losing game. Well, I'm accountable. I call the wrong place. They take full accountability. Otherwise, you get lambasted in the press, right? No, and so uh, number three, you got to stop. No excuses. You can't stop doing what you say you'll do. If you tell somebody you do something, you got to do it. I'll get back to you, and you never do. No, that's not accountability. I'll, I'll try to try to come by. Try no, you're not. I will be there Tuesday at ten o'clock. We will have a meeting. When here's what I want you to do. I want you to get this budget half done. I want you to come to me on ten o'clock Tuesday, and let's review it. At 10 o'clock Tuesday come, they don't come and see you. You got to go see them. You're holding them accountable by being accountable to the deadline. And then uh, I've got to be strong. I got to just buck it up and hold myself accountable to hold people accountable. You're not achieving the goal. What can we do to get you back on track? 
This is not acceptable. Your behavior, your performance is not acceptable. What do we have to do? You just have to tell it like it is. No, no, no sugar coating, right? So that's enforcement is just telling them what do we need to do to get to, to figure it out. And you got to help them. You're their mentor, you're their coach. I care about your success. And the big one is never miss meetings, ever. I call it the better deal syndrome. You better deal them. Well, a customer called and wants me to, no, tell a customer you're at the hospital. You know, you've got to, you never miss doctor's appointments. You never miss regular company meetings. There's no excuse. Uh, I can't think of any. I mean, there's a, the field guys, are, oh, yeah, inspection. Well, have somebody else be there for the inspection. Train them how to do it, right? So there's no excuses. Uh, uh, clear expectations at the bottom of the page here. Oh, start, start, start. Uh, start doing what you say, making sure people clearly understand the performance requirements. Um, have the strength to hold them accountable. Never miss meetings, okay? All right. And up on stop, stop making excuses, stop, stop threatening. No, none of that. No more of that. No disrespect. In number C, clear expectations, bottom of page three. Uh, they must, first of all, they must be clearly, uh, sorry, they must be clearly understood. You got to make sure they clearly understand what's expected. We need to write it down and document it. You can't just tell somebody because they might remember it, they might not. So let's let's make a list of things we want to make sure. The scheduled completion date is June 1st. The labor hours required for this job is 2,000 hours. The footings is 500, the slab is 300, et cetera, et cetera. Real clear. It must be completed by. We must have it formed by. We must have it poured by. We must have it stripped by. So it's real clear. Want to make sure they clearly understand what they need to do. And don't forget, you need to have these things on poor day. You need to have a vibrator. You need to have a, a screed. You need to have a, a whirly bird. You need to have all this stuff. Let's make sure we have that. And then my job is to show them I care by helping them think through the process. Coaching, mentoring, encouraging. And I want to want to have those regular meetings, right? And so clear expectations. Uh, and then, and the real real point is accountability is uh, under C. <clears throat> I, I need to explain why. Why is this so important? Well, if we don't do this properly, you know, you understand why? Why? Well, ask them. Well, if we don't get it right, these guys are real sticklers on cracks and concrete. We got to make sure there's no cracks. We got to make sure this, that, and the other thing. We saw cut it. We we, we cure it, et cetera, et cetera, and, and uh, oil forms, et cetera. We got to do what we got to do to make sure it. it uh, we we meet the goal. Otherwise, they're gonna make us rip it out. And uh, we're, we're this is a really tight bid. We got to make sure we at least achieve our goals. And uh, consequences, you know, um, you're definitely not going to get a bonus. You know, I don't know if it's grounds for termination, but, you know, that might be a bit harsh. But, you know, let's get her done. And, and the best thing you can do is put in incentives for your crews, for example, and your teams. If we hit the goals, we get an incentive, right? So we define what's expected, targets, goals, timeline, milestone, objectives, performance standards. Um, you know, be safe. Well, what does that mean? How do I define it? No Documented incidents and no lost time accidents. Clear. No violations. And uh, clear performance plans. So what do we need to do? Okay, so let's turn to page four and talk about commitment. Commitment is two-way. I commit to help you and you commit to get her done. So it's two-way. We got to make sure we clearly agree. Are you, you, you agree and you hereby commit so you're going to get this done by Friday, right? And when you get it done, you're going to bring me the completed product, and we're going to meet Monday morning at 10 a.m. You got that? Okay, let's write that down. Let's agree to it. I'm putting it in my calendar. Put it in your calendar. I got to be a little bit of a kind of a pushy guy on this. Make sure it happens. And uh, if it's an estimate, okay, so we got, we got – I want to review the plans with you tomorrow morning, over, doing a quick overview, and I want to see your sub list that you select for, in material suppliers. And then on the, on Thursday, let's review your takeoff. And then on Tuesday, let's look at your crew rates. And then on Friday, let's meet in the morning so we can turn it in by noon, right? Okay, so it's clear. That's our deadlines. And we put it right on the calendar. We do it on a chalkboard. Whatever you do, I put it into my calendar, and we make sure we do it. And if they don't 
come to you at those times, you go to them. You got to hold them accountable to be accountable. All right. So uh, commitments two way. We got we got buy in. We got ownership. Uh, and uh, you own this, not me. You own it. My job is to oversee and make sure it happens. And then manager's job, I'm not here to solve your problem. I'm here to coach you and consult you. Uh, in any financial decisions, let me know over a certain amount. And we're going to meet when we're going to meet. And when you don't meet, I'm going to go to you immediately and sit down with you and see where you are and see when you can accomplish the task. And there's no excuses. There's no better deal me. There's no priorities uh, unless you come to me and say, hey, boss, I got a fire drill. Can I do that? And we'll, we'll meet in a couple hours. And make sure they have the resources, the tools, et cetera. So number P, uh, track, track, I'm sorry, track. Um, make sure you, you meet with them and clarify the accountability and results. Um, set your times to meet. Keep the open, open communication. Review the progress regularly. And then make sure you offer suggestions when they're running slow, feedback, and make sure they've got what they need. And lastly, performance. Hold people accountable to achieve results. That's your job. Enforcement's one of the keys here. So your job is to make sure they're following the standards and hold them accountable for performance. So I got I got to stay in touch with them. It's my job as their manager to stay in touch with them. I'm not going to hire a project manager, and he reports to me, and I meet with him once a month. That's not enough. I need to meet with him every week. You got the shop drawings. Have you done the job cost report? Are we on schedule? Let me see your look ahead schedule. Let me see your shop drawing and submittal approvals. Do you got all the subcontracts left? Which ones aren't? Why not? Um, and then, uh, so my job is to stay in touch and determine. If they're running slow, why? Why are you slow? Let's talk about it. What can we do to solve? Do you need an assistant? Are you delegating? Do you, are you overloaded? Do I need to take back some of the workload? And my job is to stay positive and be a pro pro professional, proactive coach. And stay in, stay in touch, right? So that's the key. All right. So let's stop for uh, five minutes, one minute. Uh, any questions here? Um, just any questions? Just type in the Q&A or... Or uh, let me put up the uh, performance. Anybody want to raise their hand? And I'll talk or I'll, I'll do it. Well, we're going to be another 10 minutes. So they want to talk, ask questions? Nope, doesn't look like it. So, okay, we'll keep going. All right. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your org chart on page five. Um, uh, page five of the handout. Let's talk about laying out your org chart properly and providing clear understanding. <clears throat> so we want to desort, design an org chart, you know, to hold people accountable. We've got to have a clear chain of command. Who's in charge of what, and who goes to who with what decisions. We don't want people asking six people until they get the answer they want. We want to clearly your report to your direct boss, your direct, your direct manager. So we want to design an org chart that works and your org charts currently designed to achieve the results you're currently getting. So if you have people that aren't accountable, it's because your org chart's designed either with the wrong uh, leadership, management, or unclear job descriptions and who they need to talk to. So when you're too busy, you're overloaded. You know, that's one of the things when I meet with people, I go through their org chart and we say, man, you're overloaded. You got too many people reporting to you. You're, you're doing too much. What can we do to get that, give you more time to be a better manager? So I've got to get the, you know, just like football, the only way you can win is you have the right players in the right positions with the right talent, the right attitude, uh, and the right experience for so you can for today and the future. So the key to your org chart, it's got to be set up for the future. We hire for the future, not for today, for current, plus will allow the business to grow and move to the next level. Sorry. Oops. And so most org charts, when they start out, most companies, here's their org chart. Um and it looks like this, you got all these boxes and there's you as the boss. And, you know, so who's in charge of sales? Who's in charge of estimating? Who's in charge of project management? Who's in charge of the field? Who's in charge of the crews? Who's in charge of the money? You are. When you're hundred percent chance in charge of everything, you can't, you're stuck. You're, you can't do what you want to do to make it happen, right? 
And so you, you're uh, stuck at the level of what you can do. So we got to start delegating to let go and build an org chart with clear job descriptions so I can hold people accountable to achieve results, right? So there we go. It's like trying to teach a dog. You don't scream and yell at a dog, hey, you're supposed to bite that cat or you're supposed to do this. No, you, you don't keep yelling, sit, sit. No, you, you walk up to a dog, you pet them and you hug them and you give them a snack or whatever you do and you say, hey, good job. That's how you get people to do what you want them to do. You don't scream and yell at them and threaten them. And so when you ask the question, what do people want? What do people want, need, expect to perform? What do you think the most important things are? Is it pay? Is it a good fringes? Is it freedom? Is it time off? Contribute? No, it's simple. Number one, on uh, right in the middle, page five, fully understanding what's expected. That's the most important trait required to get people to want to perform. They got to want to know, they must know what you want them to do and how to do it and how to perform it and the results expected. And if, you know, I tell a crew, go out there and work really hard. We'll try to finish on time. They don't know what the goal is. If I give them a goal of so many crew hours per day or per week or per lineal foot or, or for the whole job, they know what they have to do. Then they can see the finish line and they can stay in touch with achieving the goal. You know, it's like football, the last quarter, 16 touchdowns in the first three, there's only one because there's a deadline, there's an ending. They know what they have to do. The second most important thing is recognition and praise. People want to know that you're there for them and they want to be recognized, thanked, praised. I appreciate you, all those kinds of things. They want to know that you care about them and their future. Number three, they want to understand, they want to know where we're going, the big picture where we're going, how I fit in, why it's so important. So we got to always explain that. So part of my coaching and uh, suggestions and holding people accountable, first of all, they got to know what's expected. They, you got to meet with them, mentor them, coach them, give them regular recognition, make sure they understand the why. And number four, they got to know you care about them as a person. And your job is to help them achieve their personal goals and the company goals. So you've got to lead, coach, trust, delegate and let go of control to make that happen. So, so what we have to do is provide clear expectations. Can you imagine a, a company without clear goals and expectations? Can you imagine working on a crew where it's just like work as hard as you can, we hope it all works out, and we don't have meetings to go over the budget and the goals? Can you imagine a football team where there's no scoreboard, you know, without a playbook, without position descriptions for each person? Uh, how about a basketball team where there's no plays? Could you imagine? So everybody on the team, there's Nick Saban. <laughs> everybody on the team has to know exactly what's expected of them. And so we have the Monday morning quarterback. We show all the plays. Who missed the play? You know, what are we going to do about it? What do we got to do to fix that? It's real clear what's expected. Um, I asked my foreman the other day. I said, how's it going? He says, how many people are working today? He says, about half. So – so what we have to do, we have to, I, I came up with an acronym called GEAR, provide clear GEAR. First of all, we have to have clear guidelines, written, detailed job descriptions, guidelines uh, of, of what a, of, of a visual picture, a how-to, a checklist, how to accomplish results. Then we have to make it clearly ex what's expected, the minimum expected results, what results are we trying to accomplish? Safety, quality, schedule, production, et cetera. What, what's expected? And, uh, and then, we can, then we can hold them accountable and responsible. You can't hold somebody accountable unless they know how to do it and they know what the results expected are. How do you hold somebody accountable? <clears throat> what's an accurate estimate? It, you know, you're accountable. That's made a great accurate estimate to get good sub-bid coverage. Well, what's expected? Well, within 2% of labor and three uh, bids per trade. Oh, okay, that's clear. I got it. All right. Got it. Work really hard. Harder than what? I'm already working hard. I'm sweating. What do you expect? It's hot out here today. You know, so I've got to be clear. We got so many man hours. We got to make it done. Then I can hold you accountable to achieve the goal. And I can make it clear what the responsibilities, the task, and activities are that you must do to achieve the goal. I don't just want to look ahead schedule because I like schedules. I know that it improves performance. 
and it'll help us achieve the expected goals. So football, you need clear understanding of what's expected. Construction, detailed position job descriptions. Measurable results, got to have them clear. Uh, who's responsible to do what? Tax, tasks, activities, and deadlines. Clear chain of command. Clear chain of command. Level of authority. And what's my role as the manager, the hold accountable person? My role is to coach them, mentor them, monitor them, and enforce them. It's not to watch. It's to be proactively involved in their, in their job. Uh, hold them accountable, trust them, delegate, let go, coach, mentor, train, right? So, so if we think about what our role is, let's look at our job uh, manage, coach, mentor, monitor, review, and train. So let's look at a typical org chart. Uh, so here's my draft org chart on page six. Here's a, just a sample. And I usually uh, help the cli my clients. We draft their org chart for them. We work with them to come up with a org chart for today so it's clear. And each box will have responsibilities and a job description and a line of command and level of authority. So here's, here's my standard kind of draft. So the top level is the boss, the president, owner, whatever. And, it, and we have several, several boxes at the top, dark black. One of them, we want to build our wealth. So we need something to think about wealth and investments. But then we get to, we get to uh, build wealth. So we, we always want to, we don't want to forget that box. Somebody's got to be building for the future investments. Uh, so we don't, 30 years from now, you still don't have any money. We need to, that's why we're in business to build a future. But but how do we do it? We got to win work. Who's in charge of winning work in your company? Selecting the right jobs, go after better customers, find high margin work with low competition. Who's in charge of that? Who's in charge of making sure the pricing is accurate and we get good, complete estimates? We're accurate. Who's in charge of getting the work done? Build work, construction operations. So we've got project management, we've got field management, we've got equipment management, maybe got some other things, but maybe you got a service division or whatever. But who's in charge on your company of running the project management, the field and the equipment management? So if you have a project manager, who do they report to? They report to the build work person, VP of construction operations. And if there's nobody in that box, it's the president. That means the president then has to meet with the project manager on a weekly basis and meet with the field manager and the equipment manager. So we have clear chain of command and responsibilities and accountabilities. Someone has to be in charge of developing talent in your company, recruiting, hiring, training, coaching, make, not doing it, but making sure it's happening. Uh, managing HR, managing people, make sure people are getting the reviews, getting the training, getting, getting mentored, the incentives are in place, and then hiring and recruiting. And most most small companies don't have anybody in charge of hiring and recruiting. They got their secretary does the runs the ad, but who's really recruiting? Who's really making it happen? And then we have the support work team, the administrative manager uh, and the finance manager. So uh, you know they support. So so think about how you're organized. What positions need to be assigned? Uh, you have written job descriptions for each box. You have uh, job descriptions with clear accountabilities and clear responsibilities, a clear chain of command, a clear level of authority, and accountability and responsibility, what they must do with deadlines every week, every day, every week, every month. Is it clear? Does your project manager know and your superintendent know in your, you know, for example, I want my general superintendent to check in with the customer before we send the crew out. And I want my field superintendent to make sure that they walk the job with these subcontractors a week before they're needed on the job, a physical job walk. That's required. It's, it's what you're responsible to do. And I know that it increases scheduled performance. That's why we do it. So we take a hard look at our job at our org chart. Here's a bigger company, probably a, it depends. It could be 30 million. It could be, 50 million ish. And uh, uh, I don't have it in the, in the handout, just a sample here. But we look at what we have and there's the boss 
And then here's, I'm also in charge as the boss of sales, pricing, the field, op, uh, and, and, you know, I'm the chief financial officer. And, uh, and, and then, you know, I've got, I might be doing a project management. I might be doing some field management, you know, so I look at what I got. And I said, man, I need some help. So we look at what I'm doing, what I shouldn't be doing. We say, help. So what am I going to do to solve this problem? Where should I start? That's the key. I've got too many roles, too many red boxes, and I got to get rid of some of this stuff. So what do I need to do to delegate, let go, so I have more time to manage instead of do? So in order to make this happen, oh, I got to realize the pizza rule of management. Uh, you can only you can only manage five or six people. So each person, each manager can only supervise five or six people effectively. So if I got a project manager running a 12 job, it ain't going to happen. If I had a general superintendent with 12 foremen, it ain't going to happen. Uh, we need to break it down. So what we need to do then is on page seven is create a flow chart, a flow chart. So uh, this is a funny picture. This is a company I worked with, and they were a mess. I didn't know, nobody knew who's in charge of what. It was a joke. So we literally drew a flow chart and I put my dollar bill up there to just make it funny. But, uh, you know, what do we do? How do we operate? What do we have to do? And so on page seven, I have a sample and here's another one I did uh, with um, with a service company and they got sales and then what happens, who decides if we bid it, who checks the bid, and then we submit it, who does follow up and then who writes the contract, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through it. So we need a flow chart. So it's real clear what the flow is. And so uh, I, I created the one on page seven. We've got several versions, but it's just a quick sample just to show you what it might look like. Sales goes to a, uh, uh, we have a weekly sales meeting that goes to estimating and then it goes to pre-construction or turnover meeting. And then, then we have a project manager on the right who has an assistant coordinator. And then we have foreman and superintendent. All right. So the next thing we have to do is design each box needs a clear job description of what's expected. I can't hold people accountable unless they're clear. So this is one of my clients. There's Andrew Ditus there and uh, with RAC, R-A-C-C construction. They've been my client for like 15 years. And uh, Andrew there who's writing, he's now the manager of the whole company. He's, I don't know his title, but I think he's general manager. And uh, they do fantastic. And it started by getting people involved here. So here we are creating job descriptions and checklists and systems. And uh, here's another company, Fed Construction Design Builders out of Gladwin, Michigan. I came over there and we they had pretty good job descriptions, but they want to improve them. So I got everybody together in a room. And uh, you can see on the top right, we've got the estimators and accounting, and et cetera. And then over on the left, we've got controller, we've got project manager, superintendent, um, foreman, et cetera. And in the back right, we're, we've got the HR and the safety director. So we're creating must-dos, clear written job descriptions with deadlines. And so, so we create these positions, and on page eight are, are some simple examples. They're not perfect. They're not complete. They may not match your company, but they're standard. It's, it's how I create them. So I always have, what results are you accountable for? Project manager is 100% accountable for the oversight, over, overall project success, goals, performance, results. In order to make that happen, we have tasks that you're responsible. We got to establish the budget. We got to get customer approval. We got to do the job cost report, the scorecard, subcontracts, et cetera, et cetera, by a certain date or deadline. So on the left is results. On the right is activities to encourage and increase the odds of performance of the results on the left. So I've got project manager. These are just simple drafts. Uh, I've got longer ones. If you need help creating them, let me know. That's what I do. I help you create your job cost and your job your, your job budget tracking and, and then, of course, your org chart and your job descriptions, et cetera. So I've got some standard superintendent ones and, you know, uh, must-dos and, and, uh, and, and results. You know, I was with somebody yesterday talking about their foreman, and the foreman doesn't order their material. They got to call the office. Well, that's ridiculous. Project managers should make the purchase order with the wholesale house or the supplier. The foreman ought to be accountable to, to get it delivered on time, what they need, and make sure it's the right amount. 
and report it back to the office, not keep calling the office. That's crazy. Anyway, so let's do that. Let's create some job descriptions. There's some samples for you. And lastly, but not least, we need a level of authority for each position. I don't have a picture of that in your workbook, but uh, you know, what's your authority? What's your, we talked about your chain of command, but what, what authority? So each person has a level of authority. So a uh, project manager, you know, a uh, 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 subcontract five grand, you know, material purchases, five grand, small job materials on you know, 10 grand, who cares? Change orders, five grand. And so we, we give a limit to each box. A superintendent has no authority to, to uh, for change orders. They have to go through the office, go through the project. Overtime, who can, who can decide overtime? Well, the foreman can, if it's within budget, or they have to call the office uh, and get approval by noon on the day before. Who, who can buy equipment? Who can rent equipment, et cetera? Who can give a raise? You know, everything. So I created a little chart here. If you're if you want it, just send me an email. All right. So so MBWA. Years ago, our uh, what's the name? Peters. He was a business uh, consultant. He did a lot of speaking and uh, he had a lot of uh, fun workshops and seminars and he wrote a bunch of books. And um, so anyway, he used to say, I want everybody to be involved with their people. I want them to go around and meet with their people. Manage it by wandering around. So what happens is, you know, myself, for example, I used to wander around the office. Did you ever meet with your guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. I walk around the office all the time and talk to the guys. Well, how are you doing? Well, pretty good. Uh, uh, pr pretty much. H are you on schedule? Yeah, pretty much. Um, did you get all the shop drawings approved? Yeah, pretty, I'm in good shape. I mean, they're just lying to you. Did you do it or you didn't? Do it or don't. And they're, they're just, they just want you to get out of their office. They don't want you to hold them accountable. They're trying to avoid confrontation and avoid pain. And you don't want to deal with it either. So you just, okay, great. Keep it going, Joe. And, uh, you know, find out three months later or three weeks later that they're 200 grand over budget and four weeks late and you're in, tr in the toilet, right? So MBA doesn't work unless you face-to-face -face and show me. So most of you have a good project management software. You just put it up on the screen. Show me your shop, shop drawings. Show me your uh, schedules. Show me your daily report. Show me your fill in the blank, right? Let's make sure they're doing their job. That's what a manager does, enforces and monitors and reviews the performance of their people. So that's how you hold people accountable. Uh, and so as a managing manager, on page nine, I've got a big, big old page there. I'm not going to walk you through it here. We're almost out of time. Uh, you know, a managing manager is someone who manages somebody. They manage just one person or they manage a group of people or they manage a team. And so they have direct reports that they're responsible for. They're responsible for the performance of their, you know, foreman, their supervisor, their maybe a senior project manager has a couple of assistant project managers under them, and then a superintendent's under that. They're responsible for the performance of the people under them. That's what I call an MM or a managing manager. And so you don't walk down the hall and say, how are you going? And so here's your org chart. And it's a manager who manages a direct report, a uh, group of people, group of managers, team, supervisors, who's accountable. The managers, managing manager is accountable and responsible for their performance. Actions and think of it as a head coach. You've got an offensive coordinator, special teams, defense, and you're responsible for their performance. Now, they, they do the work. You just oversee it. And you meet with them on a regular basis. You don't just let them call the plays without talking to you. Uh, before the game, you know, you have a game plan. So your job is to create a game plan with these guys and stay involved. Keep keep your eye on the scoreboard, right? So your job is to uh, oversee, direct, to achieve results. Uh, hold them accountable. Your job is to ensure they perform. How do you do that? You stay in touch with them. And you you help them and you encourage them and you meet with them on a regular basis. And you you help, you enforce your strategy, your systems, make sure they're doing them making sure we're following the company standards. And number four, we, we want to make sure we monitor the workload. We don't have people overloaded. And we got the right logistics, the right people. And uh, then number five, very important. My job as a manager is to promote teamwork, be a winning coach, mentor, coach, man to, to the managers. And so, so in order to make that happen, I have to 
make it a top priority to manage effectively. If I don't make that a priority, one of my daily, weekly priorities, I can't, I'm never going to hold anybody accountable. So if you're over a bunch of people, you got to meet with them every day, every week. Well, not every day, but every week. And so I used to have a full-time assistant, always had one for years. Best thing I ever did. Well, not the best, but one of the top. And uh, uh, it, every morning, nine o'clock, you know, I get my morning stuff done and whatever. First thing when I had got through my stuff, I meet with my assistant and we go through the list. My job is to go through the list. So I have a list of everything I ask him to do. And if I'm a, if I'm managing project managers, I got a sheet of every job, and I go through. Hey, what happened with you're going to get back to me on submittals? How are you doing on shop drawings? Okay, get back to me tomorrow. So I'd make a note: shop drawings, meet tomorrow. So if they didn't come to see me, I would go see them. My job is to hold them accountable. I can't hold them accountable. But I don't have a list of what I'm want them to do. So I'd meet with her every day, and then the next day we'd pull out the list and we just check it off, and I'd add ten more things to the list. My job is to hold myself accountable to hold them accountable, right? And so I've got to dedicate time to meet weekly with my direct reports, sometimes daily, depends. What else? Monitor and review their performance. How are you doing on, I've got my list, you've got your list, let's go through it, make sure we're on the same page. Measure it, results. Number three, or next spot button. I got to hold them accountable. How come you didn't do that? What's what's the problem? What happened? Why didn't you get it done? What can we do to get back on track? My job is to encourage them, motivate them, and, and push them to get back on track, not threaten them. If you threaten them, you're, they're done. They're looking for another job. You got to encourage them. You got to make them want to perform. That's the key. If they don't want to show up on time, it's, it's because you're not holding them accountable, and they don't want to because there's no... There's no reason they have to. They don't understand. So you have to decide eventually, are they a keeper or not? You know, a K, keeper. Uh, talent, experience, values, are they a keeper? That's what you have to decide. And uh, mentor, coach, motivate, encourage. Why do I want to work for a jerk? They don't motivate me. They don't encourage me. They don't praise me. They don't recognize me. They don't thank me. They just treat me like a machine. And so your job then is the CRO. You got to be the CRO, Chief Reminder Officer. Don't forget, this is how we always do. You know, your 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 look ahead schedule doesn't have enough stuff in it. This is how we do it. You're not following the standard. You're being sloppy. I got to continually remind people. You tell them once, then I remember it. Okay. So what are we going to do? On the bottom of uh, page nine, I've got a weekly job walk checklist. I want my project managers to. Uh, walk the job every week, and these, this is their agenda. You know, and I know it works, and I know it's a pain, and I know nobody wants to go out there. Most project managers want to drive by once a month. You know, but they're accountable for the performance of the project, not just paperwork. So in order to make that happen, they have to meet with their superintendent or their foreman every week and go through this list. Number one, the schedule, the job cost production report, a punch list, quality control, cleanup, inspection, safety, change order problems, status, billing accuracy. Uh, tell me what you're doing next week, planning ahead, uh, any documentation. And what are we doing about inspections? You got that in hand. Okay, so that's kind of the end of the session here. Uh, so your, your job, you got to meet with them to hold them accountable. If you don't monitor them, you don't review them, how can the heck you hold them accountable? So step one, hold them accountable by meeting with them and make it make it a clear picture. Stop saying, I wish my people were more accountable and responsible. The reason they're not is because of you, your input equals their output. And so in conclusion, clearly make sure they understand what's expected. What results they're accountable to achieve? They gotta have a scorecard, an update, you gotta know where they are. You gotta have written job descriptions, you gotta monitor and enforce them and not let them not do it. Not let them not do it. They have to you have clearly let them know what their authority, their level of command, and their chain of uh, command. And your job is to coach, meet, monitor, mentor, train, enforce, trust, delegate, let go of control, and let them make decisions. Okay, so the question for you as we close out, what are you going to stop doing? 
What have you been doing you shouldn't be doing? What are you going to start doing to achieve accountability? That's the key. All right? So uh, I want to thank you. I'll open it up to questions here in a second. If I can help you, I've got some tools and templates on my website, hardhatbizcoach.com. Just click on the templates and tools uh, link if you're interested. I've got a, over 100 Excel templates, PDFs, job descriptions. I've got it all, all there, my blueprint. And, of course, if you need some help, I do ongoing <coughs> coaching sessions. Uh, if you want a free session, just send me an email. We'll see if you're, I can help you. We'll do a quick session, a half hour, an hour, and we'll see if it's a fit. And if I can help you, uh, we'll 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 get we'll get going helping you, you know, organize your goals, organize your accounting, your finance, organize your job description, organize your flow chart, uh, accountability, field management, production, whatever you need help with business wise. Let me know. 